Wellness here on Para-X Radio. Today my guest is Marilyn Hughes. Her website is outofbodytravel.org and I really will encourage you to go over there and just peruse through her website because it is just an incredible website and the information there is really, really good. Welcome, Marilyn. Thank you. Thank you. I'm happy to be with you, Christine. I appreciate the invite. Well, I appreciate you coming on and I really, I just, I want to get into everything. We have the two hours. Thank you for the, doing the two hours because You're there's welcome. so much that I'm interested in that you work, you, you work with and you write about. Um, I want to direct everybody to outofbodytravel.org, Marilyn Hughes, and if you go over to the website, you can see what I'm talking about. I think a lot of people misunderstand um, it's astral projection that you do. Is that fine to say that? I, I see that you're, you write about the Catholicism and, and in the, the light of that faith, I don't want to misspeak, but it's like astral projection. It's, yeah, similar to astral projection. The biggest thing is, you know, if you want to get really tight on terminology when you're talking about astral travel or astral projection you're referring to a singular realm the fourth realm whereas out of body travel includes the heavens the purgatories the hells um, which are all you know and there's an infinite number of those so uh, part of the reason I go with out of body travel is because it kind of covers everything all right I'm gonna I'm gonna just back you up a little bit there's an infinite number of of out of body realms yes there are um, an infinite number of heavens an infinite number of purgatories and an infinite number of hells um, for every possible configuration uh, that you can see in a soul uh, you know a realm will be born for its purification some of these are purgatorial and then some of them are really low realms the the dark deep hellish realms where souls are much more trapped by by their own uh, their own you know their own diminishments than anything else but even so assistance is sent to them on a fairly regular basis as well that that makes sense to me and I think it makes sense to a lot of my listeners um, one of the things that's going to benefit those of you who are listening is I think that you, Marilyn, you have an understanding of those other realms where in some, I don't want to be some maybe uh, more doctrinal religions, they only have an understanding of like one or two. Well, I think, I think though, it's interesting because if you read the mystics, the writings of the mystics throughout time, I think that many of the mystics understood this. And they, they wrote about it in their writings. Um, but you're right that, like in Catholicism, they'll talk about heaven, hell, and purgatory. Um, it doesn't necessarily mean it's a singular, you know. Um, but many of the saints and uh, many of the mystics, uh, not just Catholic, you know, throughout the world in all traditions have had experiences indicating the multiplicity of these, of our universe and how... Um, there are all these infinite extensions. I think people would be really surprised to see um, how vast all of this really is, so much further beyond what we can really comprehend in our human minds. Just like uh, St. Paul said, I has not seen nor ear heard what God has prepared. It is very much like that. And so there is just Whatever you can imagine, it's so much more. Um, whatever you can think, it's so much deeper. Um, whatever you can wish for, it's so much greater. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And I like the Catholic aspect that you have. I like the Christian aspect that you have in your in your spiritual work, because I think a lot of times for me, people will say to me, "Well, if if somebody comes to you and they're a client and they have a dark energy or a dark entity." only the churches can help and, and only somebody who's ordained, which I understand ordination, I understand that that uh, passed down of, of, I don't want to say power, but authority. Right, the authority and the anointing of the hands yeah. that the priests have. Absolutely. You know, and when, when people say that, I think it's um, partly because they don't understand the full scope 
of yeah. what has to occur in a situation like this. Many priests, and you know, I used to work for the Catholic Church for a period of, I don't know, five, six, seven years. Um, can't remember quite how long. And um, priests would often have other people like myself and other people help with uh, a lot of the details. You know, the priest and sure, and they would be called in for a blessing of the piece of people and the persons. But like uh, people like myself, you know, the priests didn't have the time to literally just sit with them for hours while they were going through some of their crises or just be there um, or be at the be at the beck of a phone call when they were having a problem in the middle of the night. And so it was uh, always a team effort. And um, even from what I understand about the exorcists, they have prayer teams. They yes. have teams of people that support and give, uh, you know, give um, comfort and also upliftment. <clears throat> and the prayer teams are really, really important in that. So I think that might be part of a misunderstanding in that we all do play a role in that body of Christ. And yeah. um, when someone is undergoing something as serious as an actual possession or even the, the less serious manifestations, the obsessions and um, all of those things, they need a lot of prayer. They need a lot of upliftment because it's not just like in one fell swoop, one second, that everything stops. After that demon is expelled by the priest, there's a great deal of prayer effort and a great deal of support that is given to the person to make sure it doesn't come back. I, I know, and it happened to me many years ago, and that was one of the problems because I was, it's one of the worst things that any human being could go through. And because of situations that I don't need to get into, because it's your show, you know, it's your time now. There wasn't the support, so if people, well, I don't know how many call you calls you get or, or consultations you're asked for, but there's a lot of people who are who are suffering from that, some type of manifestation, some type of negative energy, and the way that you say it is so perfect. It's like I wish I could say it that good, but I go on and on. <laughs> Well, you know, I do hear from a lot of people who are undergoing some type of demonic yes. uh, situations and a lot of people who are undergoing exorcisms, you know, at the hands of Catholic priests in their own respective locations and dioceses. And it's a very, very difficult process. You know, um, a lot of times it takes multiple exorcisms. I've, I've got some people where it's been going on for several years and they're, they're just having difficulty with removing the, the demonic force. And, um, you know, it's not like uh, something where, you know, like a medication where you give the medication and it's just cured. It's, it's something where uh, a lot of prayer has to go into it and also a lot of discernment and uh, being open to watching how the, the person who's under the influence response to the different um, things that you do because each situation is different and you know ironically as well the reasons that people become possessed are different and that can affect the impact of how an exorcism might be performed or whether or not it's a situation where deliverance prayers are going to be all that person needs at that time versus an exorcism. So there's a lot of variations in between. It's not a real cut and dry thing. Uh, a big part of the process, even mystically, is going in to discern what is the energetic truth about that situation, which would indicate to us what brought the spirit in, why is the spirit attached, what is going on that the soul might be doing that could encourage it to stay um what is the you know um and, and and then there's there's just so many different factors so many different factors it can come from being exposed to a place where a demonic force is simply present and someone can become <clears throat> you know a prey to that type of attack 
without even realizing it's coming on, which that um, sounded a lot like your story, Christine, from what I was able to see yeah. on uh, Paranormal Survivor, that you were in a, a place that had this demonic force there. Sometimes. And was that, would, would you say that that's what happened in your case? Yes, Car. I feel that there was like portals that were opened, whether they were done by my family or whether they were just there and then it was exasperated because there was abuse and alcoholism and all those other negative things. And I was gifted because I come from a gifted family, psychically gifted, and it just was the, the worst place at the worst time. Right. And that's what happened, yeah. Well, and that's a that's a really good point, too, is that people who have a natural gifting in the psychic area are more likely to um, be affected by this sort of thing as well. But then, you know, you have situations also that are uh, different in that, like, for instance, uh, when uh, either violence or abuse is perpetrated upon another person or uh, rape or incest or molestation, right. what, what you see in the mystical realm is that the perpetrator is actually almost like thrusting their demons onto the victim. So a victim of certain types of crimes can absolutely be impacted by the demons that in, that implicated the attack upon them in the first place, which originated with the perpetrator. So that can happen as well. Um, and you know, interestingly, also you look at cases like Emily Rose, yes, where it seemed like she had gone to a college, and there was just a succubus uh, incubus in that dorm room. And she was literally just uh, an easy target. You know, she was uh, not aware of what was going on at all. But you can also see that in a college dorm or something like that, that there could easily be a lot of incubi, succubi type of energies because there's a lot of um, unmitigated sex going on, which draws those demons into that building but who could have thought, you know, that it could get that bad as it did with Emily Rose? But, you know, we have that. And then there are the situations like with the young boy, um, which was portrayed, uh, you know, the, the, the case that inspired uh, the Exorcist, The Exorcist, yeah. And then they, they did a movie following it, which I think is called Possessed, which was the true story of that case and it was a young boy and he had an aunt in the home who was messing around with a lot of occult practices and then she passed on and after she passed on it was like she was calling in all these uh, darker and darker spirits to really attempt to uh, create a perfect possession in that young child yeah. and yeah. so again another case where it can be completely, um, you know, I think they were completely blindsided as to that this could happen to this degree, you know. They were, they were just trying to take care of a family member in her later years, but her own alliances with dark forces became a real danger to their child. I, I know. And then they Hollywoodized it. And it took away the whole, I think it didn't take all the impact away, but it took away a lot of the impact that those cases could have had for people like you who do the work or people who are interested in getting help, you know? Right. Yes, absolutely. And, you know, one of the things I think that is uh, really important for those who are listening who might be dealing with these kinds of things, mystically and in the out-of-body travel state, I have seen the power of confession, of mass, and of the sacraments of the church. And, you know, the first thing I would recommend is go straight to confession. I remember there was, uh, and I know not everyone's Catholic, so do it in whatever way works for you, but sacramental confession is such a powerful, energetic event. I've seen where the grace of God moves through the confessional and through the person. and. 
uh, an exorcist once said not too long ago that confession was a much stronger sacrament than the practice of exorcism. Um, an exorcism, I don't believe, is considered a sacrament. He, he called it something else. So, but um, going to confession and then going to mass really could help um, because of you want to get some cleansing moving through your body um, to create like a clear field where you can try to bring something better in. You know, if you're truly in the position where you're just possessed, you need an exorcist. Yeah. But there are a lot of people who are dealing with all kinds of obsessions and various levels that are not necessarily possession. And, you know, there's ways to go through the cleansing. Another excellent practice for those who are dealing with the lesser forms would be um, the, the divine mercy devotions. <clears throat> you know, when you practice and pray the chaplet of the divine mercy, um, it is a chaplet where Jesus promised St. Faustina the cleansing of all your sins. Um, and we just got through uh, last weekend what was Divine Mercy Sunday, where every year, the week after Easter, if you go to confession and then you receive communion and go to Mass um, within the seven day period of Divine Mercy Sunday, you can ask the Lord for literally baptismal purity. It's not only the remission of sins, but the remission of the punishment due to sin. And so what these things do is bring a baptismal purity, um, which allows for the soul to start cleansing these things out and engage in, in a discernment process. Um, certainly, I would, I would recommend anybody go get the blessing of a priest um, for starters as well. Um, if you're in a case of absolute possession, then you're going to need to talk about getting in touch with the exorcist in that diocese. That's really important. I, I mean, they, they will, I, it's been 30 years, but they put me through every test, every doctor's visit. I was tested in my brain waves, my, my eyesight, my hearing, everything. I mean, I, I got a little bit perturbed with the church, but even I understand that they will really play devil's advocate. I mean, they will leave no stone unturned to see, to make sure that it's nothing, um, you know, natural that's going on. Right. And, you know, they do that because um, if, if someone is suffering from something else, you know, uh, if they have epilepsy, if they have um, some form of mental illness, whether it be schizophrenia or psychosis, an exorcism could actually make those things worse. And so they are very, very, um, very, very studious about making sure on those matters um, because they realize that and they know that in the past, um, people who needed a very different kind of help sometimes underwent things like exorcisms and it made things worse. Um, I think that's really important um, for people to know that that's why they can be so intensive because they don't want to make a mistake and, and you know, do harm. Um, and that, that's a really, it's a really tough line because um, I've spoken with some people who are very frustrated with the process because it's just not working for them. Yeah. And um, it's, it's just very, very difficult. It's not something that gets resolved easily or quickly. Usually it takes um, a lot of time. Some people are lucky and it happens with one or five exorcisms. And then there are people who continue to need the exorcisms over years and years. And these are the people that are real frustrated. And in those cases, I think there's a lot of uh, attempts to f try to discern why this uh, force has such a stronghold in the soul. And so there's a lot of intrusive self-examination and that can be uncomfortable. Yes, it can really. Yeah, because they're asking you to look for any and everything that could be going on or that might have happened in your past that you're not remembering. 
that could have given this stronghold. Um, so it, it, it's, it's a very, you know, it's not a very private process, I guess is what I should say. Nope. Um, it's, a, it's a good, it's a good uh, what do they call it, an examination of consciousness. Yes. It really is to sit back and say, where could I have been um, participated in what happened? You know, we don't want to feel like we let the devil in the back door. But, you know, there's always something that we do. But I had a, I had a being, I don't know what it was, didn't ask, didn't want to name. And it was with me for years. And what I had to do, I don't want to get too graphic, but people know I'm a big mom. Because um, it helped me. <laughs> but I was raped when I was young. And I held on to not unforgiveness of my, my abuser, but unforgiveness of myself. And I had to go through what I call a, a soul's, I had to go to a soul journey. I had to go back in time and go back to where I split. And I, and I disassociated. And what had happened to me was it was holding on to my chest. Between, excuse me for getting like metaphysical. But the, the heart chakra and the, what is the one up near the belly button? The solar plexus. The, yeah, the solar plexus. Yeah. When I did the, what do they call it? The soul retrieval and the healing. And I cried and I just let go. And I said, look, I was just nine years old. I couldn't have fought. The thing just let go and went out the window. And it was just like that. Over all 30, 40 years of having that, it just let go. So there's a lot of things that I, I gosh, you say it so, you speak of it so well. That Thank you. Use the spiritual healing and deliverance, but sometimes it just happens where it was probably a hundred times people tried to help me to get that out of there. They couldn't do it because I had to let go. No. Well, and I, I think that's really well stated because there are so many things that we don't want to forgive ourselves for, and we don't realize that that can actually create a stronghold. And, you know, there are a lot of women, including myself, who experience sexual assault as young women who may need to take a closer look at that, you know, yeah. because it is very natural to blame yourself as the victim of of that type of a crime and 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 a lot of other crimes too people blame themselves or just um other things that happen that don't have a great outcome you know and um i think it's so important for us to remember even in uh one of the things my priests talk a lot about is the scrupulosity sometimes people can draw things in um by being so scrupulous that they they're literally not believing in the mercy of god because yeah. they're they're so worried that if i don't say i was impatient five minutes ago or you know um that their that their confession will be invalid or that um that their their contrition is not correct but what happens is you are not believing in the mercy of god and if you think about that for a moment how easily that can turn into a, a doorway for a demonic presence because of yes. course that's going to be played upon where the demons are going to say yeah that's right you can't trust in the mercy of god you'll never be good enough you're always going to screw up you know yeah. and what it does it's the exact opposite of what jesus christ said first of all in the gospel but then repeated to saint faustina in the 1930s uh, which brought about the divine mercy revelation and, and practice, which is now a feast day in the Catholic Church, one week after Easter. And, and there's the whole chaplet, um, which was, I want you to tell souls of my mercy and how my heart is burning to pour out my mercy on souls. That's what people need to start really hearing is that God created us imperfectly. He knew we were going to be imperfect. He knew we were going to have flaws. He created us to be this way. And God is burning to pour out his mercy upon us. And when we allow it to you know, literally pour over us like the blood of Christ, it becomes much, much more difficult for strongholds to form that the demons can get a hold of. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and that's part of the reason why uh, there is so much that they will put in our heads about, oh, I'll never be good enough. I'll never be forgiven. 
I'll never be this. I'll never be that. I can never make up for what I did then, you know, because that's, um, that's a way to create another doorway. And then it offers the opportunity for a stronghold to form. Just like you were stuck in that moment when you were nine years old. And um, I think a lot of us probably have moments that uh, we have surrendered a little bit more of our power to than we should in the sense of trusting in the love and mercy of God to uh, cover us. You know, there is a profound difference between a soul that says, you know, a soul that's coming from an evil place is just, I really want to, you know, mess people up, you know what I mean? And a soul who says, I, uh, I really didn't mean to cause harm, but I realized that I did. It didn't turn out the way that I had hoped. That's where mercy can enter, you know? This is where, you know, one of the questions that I think is great for everyone to ask is, how many of you have ever gotten up in the morning and said, I want to screw up people's lives today. I want to hurt people. That's true. <laughs> Very true. And so what that tells us, it tells us that um, the majority of humankind, you know, with a few exceptions that we do have where people do have evil intentions, um, the majority of humankind doesn't set out to make mistakes or to hurt other people. But our very human nature means that we will anyway, because we'll do things with good intentions and it'll turn out badly, or we'll just make a bad decision because we didn't think it through and it'll turn out wrong. Um, but what we have to go back to is that intention that we never intended to cause harm or to hurt and then we do everything that we can to resolve issues that we may have participated in creating. And then we have to trust that God's mercy covers our humanity. It covers our inability to be perfect or to know the consequences of every dumb thing we might do. You know what I'm saying? Yes, it's, you, you say it perfectly. In there. And when people are abused as children, those create the false thought form and then that brings up the strongholds and it's almost like you have to keep chipping away at those false those false thought forms that created the, the strongholds because it's a hard that's why I think Jesus said don't don't hurt children, you know, leave the children alone. That's right. why the punishment is so bad for anybody who doesn't who doesn't listen. Because they're creating a lifelong open open, I don't want to say, oh, you know, the aura is open, the, the energy field, whatever we call it, and it's just, um, it's really nice to hear you say that. I really appreciate you saying that, and I know a lot of people who are listening will appreciate that as well. Can you tell me how you got started in your work? Because I'm curious to see how you were led to do what you do. Sure. Um, when I was about, ironically, nine years old, yeah. I had a um, I had a mind-blowing experience. It was so beautiful. Um, the the heavens. I was lying in bed. The heavens opened up. The clouds parted. There was a marble staircase. Angels lined the sides of the staircase, and I saw what I perceived to be God and Jesus Christ sitting in thrones at the top. And I was being compelled to walk up the staircase towards them, and. Um, it was a very involved vision, but the, but the general essence of the experience was I was told that I had to do something and it was important that I do it, that I do not, um, you know, uh, turn away my responsibility to do it, but that God would return to me at a later point in my life and, um, and it would be revealed to me. And, um, I was also shown that I would go through a, a lot of hardship um, in terms of, you know, during my childhood, there was a lot of a lot of dark things that went on in my childhood as well, but also that I would go through a lot of hardship just because I would be different and it would be hard, um, but that I was to follow through and complete my mission. And so I had that beautiful experience and um, 
I was just so blown away by it. I remember going upstairs and talking to my mom and my family were pretty much atheists at that time. And um, she basically made it clear I should never speak of it again. And she was very upset about it. <laughs> and um, and um, so I didn't. I kept, I kept that to myself. But when I was about 22, I had my first spontaneous out-of-body experience since that time. And then it started happening regularly. And I started journaling about these experiences because it seemed like it was leading somewhere. So I started receiving instruction about the age of 22. And I was told many times that I had stuff I needed to do. And I, uh, you know, whenever I was tempted to just be like, okay, whatever, I was given uh, a vision that would profoundly impact me in the sense of, no, you have to do this, even though you think it's, you know, it doesn't make sense at this time, because until, until things kind of unravel and unfold, sometimes things don't make much sense. You don't, you don't follow until you see the, you see the picture when it's all been finished down the road. You know what I'm saying? So, um, I would be given a lot of guidance about, you know, writing music that I would hear in these experiences also writing down all the experiences. I was being shown things and taught things by different uh, spiritual teachers and guardian angels in the angelic realms. And um, for, a, for a while, it was focused primarily on the light and it was just very beautiful and peaceful and serene. There came a point in time where the Blessed Mother um, came down and she said, it's time for you to learn about the dark side and I was like, no, I really, I really don't want to go there. You know? Yeah, I know. I, know. <laughs> I was like, no, thank you. But, but she was very stern and she let me know that this had to happen. It was absolutely necessary. And, you know, since that time, that was like 20, 25 years ago, I so appreciate that the path was kind of forced upon me because it's so important to understand this side of it um, in order to understand what creates the lighted side of it. You know, you can't understand it without both all of it coming together. So I started going through a period where I learned about energetic alteration, which is where you um, do things uh, in the mystical realms, which will assist in changing the outcome of something on the ground that God wishes not to happen. Um, and then, then we started going into where I had to learn about the purgatorial realms, the hell realms, and also about evil as a force, about uh, Satan and the demons, which was a very difficult and uncomfortable period. Um, but it was very important and vital in the sense of understanding that there is an energetic truth behind all of these things. And so, you know, when you go in mystically or you're out of, out of your body and you receive the energetic truth about a situation or scenario, um, a lot of times you can pinpoint um, more, more clearly what it is that this person is struggling with. You know, so for instance, in the angelic realms, we have angels of virtue, you know, um, we also have demons of vice. So many of the things that I would see would, would give me an indication like, okay, this person has a demon of greed or a demon of vanity or a demon of uh, lust. A lot of lust things are out there. And obviously, when you have a lot of uh, cases of rape, and uh, child molestation, you're going to have even more of those. So there's a lot of demons. And, you know, within the realms of each of these categories, there are different types of oppression that you can experience from different demons. So an incubi and a succubi would be very different from what I call the gull demon, which is a more typical demon of the lust vice that you might see among people who are more promiscuous than maybe they should be. Yeah. And so there's all these different orders of the angels and of the demons, 
but what it provides is you get a window into, okay, who's, who's uh, bothering this person? Um, is it a particular, uh, you know, can we identify, is it a particular vice? Is it a particular um, throne or dominion that this person, that, that this demon has taken a stronghold in this person? And that helps then with the discernment process then in also uh, giving the person some direction on the ground as to how to proceed to um, alter whatever it might be in their personality construct that is allowing for uh, the, the ones that are there because it's compatible versus the ones that are there because somehow they've broken down uh, the law of dominion in that person, which is where you go into the possessions. Well, the dominions are the ones who, who, who pursue the possessions? They, well, what they try to do is they try to, they all pursue it. Okay. And you can see this if you look I around, if you, I'm sorry, what? Initiated is what I meant. Okay. Yes, they definitely all initiate it. And what you can see is like, even if you look at, uh, like there are cases like what you had experienced where um, this was probably more of a, a group of demons that resided in that building. Um, what you also can experience are when people start to let go of their morality or their faith and then yeah. you can see it happening very slowly in their cases where they kind of descend into this place and all of a sudden this person might have been a very different person and all of a sudden they're filled with anger or hatred or rage unforgiveness um, and those are all things you know um vengeance um all these things are the qualities of the demonic and of the evil dark side um, when we look at the qualities of the Holy Spirit, that's going to be the opposite. It's going to be forgiveness, love, mercy, growth, evolution. Um, you know, these are some of the things that we can do in our own individual lives to discern what direction are we going. Are we finding ourselves becoming more and more angry? And this happens to all of us because life happens to all of us. So when we find that happening... Do we have a spiritual practice or prayer that we go to that assists us in processing through that anger so that it can become something uplifting rather than a doorway for something dark to come in and, and then just take another take another piece of us and see if they can take us down another notch? Yes, they really are awful. That's all they do. Yes. chipping and chipping away and it's like if we go one way we can really improve and raise our vibrations and understand but if we go the other way it's like one fraction of an inch one way or one fraction of an inch the other way because I've been on both sides <laughs> and right. it's just a constant battle it really is I'm sorry to interrupt you no no that was very well said um, and you know one of the qualities of evil is um unforgiveness whereas the qualities of good are forgiveness um there's also the quality of evil which um is very much an important discernment point is that evil um you can tell the difference between like there's there's three different phases of of what you experience in the darker realms you have ignorant darkness where someone is ignorantly doing something but it is dark and it causes harm you have dominant darkness where somebody is pretty dominantly dark they do whatever they want to do they don't intend to cause harm but they don't care if they do evil enjoys causing harm so when you spoke about how awful the demons are this is absolutely true this is exactly where they're coming from you know, when you look at the cosmology that God has created and, and given to us, we have good versus evil, light versus dark. What does the light do? C 
creation continues to create. What does evil do? It destroys. It continues to destroy. And what happens when you destroy endlessly? It's a simple death. Creation continues to create, which is a life-giving force. Destruction ends in death, whether it's physical death or a spiritual death, which is what you will usually see with evil, where the soul that has been consumed by the evil becomes almost spiritually dead. And that means there's no more forgiveness in their heart. <clears throat> they usually take on things like vengeance, um, uh, anger, hatred, because these are all the qualities of the demons. And the qualities of the light would be, you know, the opposite. And so we, you see this continual flowing of how that energy moves. And we have to um, be very much aware of how we are moving within those spheres of energy. And we can discern a lot of it by recognizing the types of the types of actions and feelings that are related to the backwards thrust, which is darkness and evil, or the forward movement, which is God, creation, and the light. And, and it's real. this simplifies it for us as we're trying to discern our own place within that path, especially if we're feeling like we might be uh, being tormented by some dark forces of any kind. We want to look at what exactly am I doing and feeling? Because this is going to help you start pinpointing what types of dark forces are affecting you. And it also gives you the opportunity <clears throat> to um, then engage in spiritual activities that would cultivate the opposite virtue. By cultivating the opposite virtue, you are slowly then eroding the stronghold that that demonic or dark force has in your life uh, because once they're no longer compatible, so as you cultivate that virtue, you become less and less compatible, then they lose their permission to stay. Hey, that's a good point. Yes, I understand that. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Thank it, you. It, a lot of people will be angry and they'll say to me, well, how come this is still happening to me when I believe in God, I believe in Jesus? And it happened to me because I have a lot of guilt. There was a lot of guilt. When somebody is abused or uh, they're a victim of something or even just in everyday life, there's so much blame and so much um, victimization of certain people. There's like one group of people sort of where they want to be um, bullies and then there's those who are bullied and it's right. really important to understand that the mercy of God is there and I forget all the time there are times that I'll be sitting here praying and I'll be like what am I saying just give this all to God God is God I'm not God I have to give it all to God you know mm -hmm. thank goodness I'm not because I would screw it up so much but I relate. Yeah. <laughs> right? no matter how much we learn something comes into our lives and we're like wait <laughs> i don't get this now i have to learn again how do you have to keep raising yourself up level by level so that god can use you completely until we can hopefully go and be with god um can you touch about if you were done on the other subject because it's fascinating i'm so happy you came on um can you touch a little bit about i, I know that i love padre pio and i've always even before i knew who he was i had a devotion to him when i was young i was abused and i was well, in a basement, it doesn't really matter to go in. And I used to see visions of him, and I never knew who he was until I got to be about 22. And I saw one of his little the holy card with his picture on it. To, you know how they have those in the bookstores and stuff. Right. He used, to, he used to buy locate. And I guess that's the same as astral projection or astral travel, out of body travel, excuse me. Um, do you think that? Do you think that when you go, because I see things, I have a lot of visuals. I mean, I will see shapes, I will see shadow figures, I will see demons, and I don't like it. <laughs> I wish it would stop. <laughs> if I don't have a spiritual director, and I need a spiritual director because I don't want to trust myself 
to see these things and know what to do. I get, I get, they talk, sometimes they talk to me, others, others seem to be more angelic. But do you think that uh, violence and, and the things that go on in this world can actually open a portal or a, another dimension, if that's the right way to put it? I don't know the Catholic way to put it. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, ironically, you know, the violence that we are seeing all around the world is absolutely the work of the demonic. Think about this. I mean, we have a unique period of time right here where we had the horrific attack in New Zealand on the Muslim worshipers. And then we had this follow up attack, which was horrific in Sri Lanka on Christian worshipers. In both cases, the perpetrators really believed and this is what this is part of how we need to especially those who are experiencing any type of persecution demonically or struggling with this they really believed they were doing something that would make them a martyr to yes, god I know. I know. Now, this is important because what does it take to uh, bring someone, you know, in the Catholic faith, we are taught that the moral law is carved into our hearts. Um, and I believe that to be true. But what did it take in terms of the minds of these people being twisted to yeah. the point that they believed that committing an act of evil against people that God himself loved and created would please God? There is so much that had to have happened for a person to go from knowing and loving a wonderful God to literally serving Satan and thinking they're serving God. But that's what happened. So usually it's gradual when, um, when people are being taken down by the dark side. They're going to be taken down in, in pieces. It's not going to be blatantly right in your face you're going to be questioned on one belief at a time you know and maybe two years three years later all of a sudden you don't believe in god anymore or you've got all this anger and all this vengeance but you know the violence not only is it another gateway that opens up it's a gateway that was already there for the violence to be able to be perpetrated in the first place you know uh -huh. so yeah, the people who perpetrate them have to be under the, the influence of evil to be able to do that. And remember, again, evil is I enjoy causing harm to others uh, or another human being. One of the things you'll see like with serial killers is a lot of them share the same thing about how they really enjoy it's almost like a high some of them it's even like a sexual experience to kill somebody yeah. that's evil that's someone who has a possession on some level you know there's possessions that require exorcisms and there's possessions where people have just embraced evil and have become it oh. and so you know we have we have different types of things there are people like uh, most of the time when people actually have a possession that an exorcist would deal with, they didn't intend for it to happen. But someone who's committing violent and vile acts is usually going to be someone who has embraced it, likes causing harm. Those are the characteristics of darkness and evil. So that's the kind of things that we have to look for whenever you have a horrific act committed on any location that location will be charged energetically yes. with those events and that's part of what you know like you experienced in the basement of that house where whatever happened in that basement whether it was from your own family or from families who lived in it before was electrically charging it i actually lived in a house um like 10, 15 years ago, and I was really surprised because there was so much spiritual warfare and the house was a new house. But what I was able to find out was that it was built on land where there had been uh, several battles during the cavalry and the uh, Indian Wars. 
And so you go beyond just the house or the building itself and you go to the land. Most people have heard about the burial ground issue. So if you're on a burial ground, that's going to be an issue. But think about other things like battlefields. Um, There's also places where, uh, you know, even more modern day issues, if you are living in a house that used to be used as a meth house, it's going to have terrible, terrible energy. Um, You know, um, so, you know, some people want to flip those things, you know, Um, and it takes a lot more than doing the physical work to the house to make that house truly habitable safely, because people can be possessed by that sort of thing. Methamphetamine, by, by its very nature, is a drug that is intended to really scatter the personality and actually make somebody easy to possess. It has those qualities. So um, there's so many different possibilities. Whether If abuse was committed in a house before you were there, you know what I mean? Uh, there's, you know, depends on the, the house, the age of the house. A lot of times if you're in a building, you can look up the history of the building, but you also want to look up the history of the land um, because that can affect it too. So all these places where these things happen are going to be highly charged for a while. And what we, uh, you know, as people need to be doing is sending a lot of prayer for the healing of those portals that have been opened up, you know. Um, We also need to realize as well that God is a loving and merciful God and there is no way that those Muslim worshipers or the Christian worshipers who died in the act of praying to him were not going to be welcomed into heaven. I agree with that 100%. Yes, and so we must trust in that as well because, you know, evil does not get that. That belongs to God. And so they may, they may, as you know, I think it was St. Paul who said, you know, they may take your life, but make sure they don't touch your eternal life, you know, and that is the truth, (laughs) you know. It's very, very true, and it it is a battle. It's just a battle over and over and over again every day. When I was young, my father would associate with people, well, to worship the devil. They were dark witches, and they would teach people how to astrally project and summon demons in certain areas to change uh, the, I I hate to say neighborhoods, but certain places where there was like ley lines or energetic stuff that they needed. I don't really know that much about it, but they would go in and they would actually evangelize these areas with the darker energy that they worshiped. And I think that for me, it's like I keep getting the, 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 the prompting to pray and to ask angels to come into certain areas whether or not it's from God, I, I, you know, I don't know. It could just be in my mind, but I doubt it. Um, so I just pray and I ask for angels to be in certain places, and I hope everybody would do that because that's a horrible thing to actually kill people like that when they're worshiping God. I, I, th- I can't think of anything worse than that. I mean, extremists, you can see where they can have like um, strongholds with the false beliefs that you said was perfect when you said that people think that they're doing something good for God when they're committing violence against his people. I can't even imagine how, how much better to see that. Did I, did I lose you? I'm still here. But I I, think, I'm yeah, having I, trouble hearing you. I'm sorry, I know it, it, the Skype is weird. But if you <laughs> you know, do you think that there's, there's things that we can do as believers to, to kind of negate it? Oh, absolutely. You know, prayer is a big one. And again, I'm going to go back to the Chaplet of the Divine Mercy. People be open to learning that. It is a purification prayer. Um, One of the things you said, Christine, that I think is really, really important. One of the darkest things that I have experienced over and over in the lower hell realms are people who practice Satanism. I know, I've seen them. Yeah, the stuff that you're talking about, the dark stuff. Um, that is the kind of thing that gets people into possession really easily. And there is a very, very, really not nice place for anyone out there who's contemplating that path. I'm just telling you, your reward will suck. (laughs) (laughs) It will totally suck. 
And, um, you know, so I've dealt a lot with people who are involved in things like that and helping them to their afterlife, which was usually in the lowest pits of hell. Um, and, but, you know, this type of magical activity and trying to manipulate energy in that way is actually a violation of energetic law. It's a violation of eternal law. Yeah. And that, and you know, the whole idea of trying to be God is part of the reason why they end up in such a horrific place is because in order to go into that space, there is a, a huge turning away from Christ. Um, because you want to master yourself, you don't want a master. And so that has its own punishment, its own reward we will put in quotes because it's terrible and it sucks and it's not a reward. It's horrible there. I, you know, I've been there a few times dealing with these souls and I just, I'm like, I cannot even fathom having to exist here, but these people are compatible to it, you know? So that's why they're there. But um, these types of uh, satanic, dark, black magic, occult things are really, really dangerous in terms of the potential for possession or um, demonic infiltration because that's actually the purpose of it. They are calling up demons, just like you said. So they're actually calling that up, pulling them up out of the, yeah. out of the depths, out of the abyss. Um, yeah. So that becomes extremely dangerous extremely dangerous and especially in our world today where secularism has taken such hold um people are afraid to even say that really you know <laughs> because we're supposed to accept all religions even if it's satanism it's like uh-uh <laughs> you know i accept a satanist who wants to inquire and may have a desire to find out the truth i'll accept that but i know what i know and i don't mess with that and, you know, if you do, uh, that is that is a gateway from hell, literally. It is the worst possible thing you can get involved in because you are dealing with some of the lowest level um, forces. And these are the types of demonic forces that do get involved in things like war and pillaging and yes. mass slaughters. And, you know, that's where it comes from. It's it's horrific. Um, it's not just, you know, there are, you know, we go back to, there are people who are dabbling and I've known, uh, people over the years, we've had people who once were Satanists who converted back to Christ. Mm -hmm. Um, so we have people that have dabbled and that's dangerous in and of itself. But, you know, if you're ignorant and you've been dabbling, just stop, just stop and ask Jesus Christ to help you to purify from it. If you're just, you know, for those who are just like, yeah, I do this because, hey, I'm into this and I believe it and I'm God and I really like all the deviant stuff and, you know, I'm just going to be a deviant, you know, then there's not much you can do for that person until they're um, willing to see or care, you know, because uh, usually those who are going to occupy those lower realms are those who truly choose it. But there are people who just play around with it. That's also very dangerous. Dabbling, playing around is very dangerous. But if you were just doing that because you're just curious, just stop. Just stop and turn your attention towards Jesus Christ and get purified before it goes any further. You know what I'm saying? It's very true. My mother was really abused. My father abused her. And she got into the, they got into the dark arts. They either were into it or they got into it. Nobody could ever figure it out. But she tied a cingulum around my waist, which is a witch's cord. For lack, I hate to it, so I don't insult witches because not all of them do that. And what she did was she attached, she never touched my waist, but she attached demons on my physical body. But it was an energy cord. It was um, a cord. And it, it, it bothered me and it tortured me for probably like 30 years. And wow. she didn't do it. She didn't do it with the intention of to hurt me. She didn't do it with an intention of hatred or evil. She did it out of fear. But her being manipulated, thinking that she would, when you put a cord on somebody, you, you're putting reins on them. You're trying to keep them from going forward. She thought that that was a good thing to do. I knew it wasn't. 
because it hurt, I can tell you that. And this was passed down through generations. And after, um, that's what led me to mostly seek a formal exorcism. But years later, my mother died in 2015. And when she died, all the things that I saw coming around her, she never, as far as I know, she never, she never sought God. She never changed her thinking that what she was doing was right. But all the beings that were around, the things that she was seeing as she was dying, I was like, let's call a priest. Because she was Catholic all her childhood. She didn't want to talk to the priest. I was like, let me do some Reiki. That's not Catholic. You know, and she wouldn't let anybody do anything at all. And I, I just, I really cringe to think where she is. But people don't understand the ramifications of what they do when they mess around with that. Yeah. So if they think it's good or not, it doesn't make it good, you know? Right. And, you know, even with um, one of the things that I was shown very clearly, um, and some people are uncomfortable hearing this, but even those who practice what they call white witchcraft, yeah. it is a violation of eternal law. And it's, and it's, it's, not, uh, it's not okay. Um, I was shown this in a horrific experience. And the reason why is because any of these types of things are involved, they involve manipulating energy to, to bring about our own will. Even, so a white witch would probably say, but I'm doing this for healing somebody. Well, use prayer if you want to work towards healing because prayer is different because it is an invocation to God asking God that if it is his will that this person be healed, that he sends that kind of energy down. When we try to take control ourselves, we are literally cutting ourselves off from the influx of the Holy Spirit. And so that's why uh, energetically, even those who practice the, the lighter side of those occult arts are going to be running into some murky water, even though they might think there's it's no big deal. I just worship the earth. The earth is beautiful. I agree with all that. There's a lot of things that um, are true and the things that people who practice those things embrace, but they don't recognize the very subtle difference between um, being aligned with God's will versus trying to impart your own. And that's where disobedience comes in. That's the great fall. That's where we have to watch what we're doing. We don't want to manipulate things that are not meant to be altered. God determines that. And if you become a really prayerful person, if you're supposed to work in energy, God will lead you. But you'll only be able to alter the things that the Lord chooses, not what you choose. You know what I mean? <laughs> It's true. And so we have to recognize that we have to remember that the fall came about from disobedience and it's really that simple that we we must remain obedient to god and remember that what we are is what we are um a lot of these occult practices and especially when you get to the really dark stuff the satanic stuff it's all going back to, you know, the Lucifer idea, which was, I want to be like God. Yeah. It is when we embrace our humanity in its fullest sense and our connection as a human being to our Lord Jesus Christ, we, we enter into a synergistic agreement with the light that, um, that gives us a certain amount of protection as well from these things we have to remember we don't need not only do we not have the capacity to be like god we don't need to be god thank god god exists and we're just these you know you know there's a the humility of just accepting our human condition is really important when it comes to the spiritual warfare and especially as it relates to any of these dark satanic or occult practices or witchcraft in that it's important to remove the idea from your mind that you need to alter things around you. You need to change things around you of your own accord. You want 
to work with a power that comes from above, not a power that comes from below. And that's, um, it's, it's really an energetic thing. I know it's hard to picture or to completely understand, but it is a very fine line. Well, I read about people wanting to, you know, I like candles, I use oils, but I don't ever try to manipulate anybody's energy field or their free will because I don't know what God's will is. And right. the only way that I use it is to make myself feel closer to the Holy Spirit or the energy, whatever you want to call it. But when you step overstep that boundary, like my mother did, unfortunately, whatever was in her mind was obviously something I can't judge her. I don't know what happened in her life. Something probably happened to her, but it caused me great suffering. And I tell people that and some people actually get mad because they think that there's some, something like justice. You know, we don't know why things happen to us. A lot of times we think something is negative in this day and age. We think everybody wants quick solutions. They want what they get. And, you know, the political arena and, and social society says, oh, you deserve everything and everybody's a victim. And we're coming away from being close to God and understanding, picking up our cross and following Jesus. It's not going to be a pleasant thing. It's going to hurt. It's going to stink. We're going to have to go in some very dark areas. But we have to follow God's will. And it's very, very hard for people to do that. But that's where the, the true empowerment comes in. You know, and we can face those beings that I know you see. I know you see them. I know you sense them. And I know that you've had to work to help people's lives to be clear of that. And this is what we want to do. This conversation is so good. I get so excited. I lose my train of <laughs> <laughs> I really. And, you know, I also, I love candles. And I use essential oils. Yeah. And I use, um, you know, I like to do wax melts. And, you know, ironically, one of the reasons I love the essential oils and the incense is because um, I wrote a book called Fragrance Mysticism, which um, ironically uh, was was titled about the fact that when you're traveling in the higher spheres, there are these beautiful fragrances of roses and flowers. And, and so I like to have those scents in my home because it reminds me of the beauty of heaven. But, you know, also down in the lower spheres of hell, there are the opposite, the putrid smells, the the uh, vomit, the, uh, you know what I'm saying? Yes, I and, do. and so the, um, what these things provide for us is the opportunity to see the difference between the two. And, um, you know, and it's interesting how you talk about what happened with your mother. And one thing I would say about that is to, again, trust in God's mercy yes. that God understood and that she is being taken care of according to his will that she will he you know god is this beautiful forgiving merciful being a father who loves us and i have seen so many cases of people in really difficult circumstances after life and god has this beautiful system where every possible configuration is handled with perfection and so whatever happened to her you know in her earlier life or whatever misjudgments she may have made I've even seen in the lower hell realms where people once they have a, a desire to go forward help is sent uh, you know David said in the Psalms you know, in the highest heavens, you are there. And in the lowest of hells, you yet you still are there. And that is so true. That is so true. Because the moment a soul asks for help, and this is part of the reason when you hear about near death experiences, and if you hear about some of the near death experiences of people who either went into the black voids or into purgatories or hells, and a lot of people who are atheists who said they didn't believe in God, they, at some point in their experience, got on their knees and prayed to God for help. And that's, it was immediate. Christ appeared. They were given assistance. This is the way it works all throughout the cosmos. And, to, you know, so taking that, anyone who might be listening, who is feeling oppressed in some way, possibly possessed, make sure you don't forget you have the power at any given moment right now just to say 
God, I need your help. And he will send help, whether you're aware of it or not. It will come. And so remember, you can always do that no matter what point of the juncture and the journey that you are at. But we want to remind ourselves and remember there are these fine lines where people can get lost or slightly turned into the wrong direction. So like, for instance, someone who practices maybe the white witchcraft, it's a small turn. It's not completely, but you know, then you can take other subsequent steps either to go further down or to turn it and go back up. So all of these things become stepping stones and they're either stepping stones towards heaven or stepping stones in another direction that most of us would really not like to go. <laughs> you know, and, um, and so we have to be careful because our, our entire world is created in a manner where the temptations and the, uh, the, the things are presented to us as if they are not a hindrance to our path. What's wrong with this? What's wrong with that? No big deal. But what happens is if there is no discernment, something that seems like a small decision can then turn into another decision that tweaks it just a little bit more in the wrong direction. Do you see yeah. what I'm saying, Christine? Yes, really and then do. it becomes a subsequent tweaking because that's usually how the dark side will work. It's how Satan will work on souls. And it is usually how uh, possessions eventually occur. But, you know, people experience the obsessions and all these other things before that occurs. And that's what you're seeing are these little steps, these little steps. You know, if you can just get your, uh, you know, the dark side is looking at it as if I can just tweak the way you think about one thing. Right. Then I keep you there for just a little bit, and then I'm going to tweak one more thing. And then you just start having subsequent tweakings, and before you know it, you've lost everything. You've lost everything that you once believed in, and everything that used to hold you up and keep you in that inflow from heaven above to earth below, which was the Holy Spirit. And then you end up in a totally different energetic thrust which is the downwards thrust with the flow towards the lower spheres and it becomes harder and harder than to discern because the inflow that's coming in is totally different than what you used to receive when you were connecting with the holy spirit you're you're receiving things you're receiving things that are like um you know uh, different emotions the anger the vengeance the hatred the pride and yeah. that can really tear you down. And then before you know it, it happens so fast. It really does. And, it, and it's a constant thing. I mean, there's, I, I went, yeah, there's people who listen to my show who are, who are being brutalized by people who are in satanic cults. And we have to, as spiritual people and as Christians and as Catholics and as Baptists, and I don't care what you are, if you're doing the, the, the light, the energy work, the light energy work, the, you're for God, these people deserve our help. None of us deserves heaven more than another person. We're all worthy of the mercy of God because God gave us that mercy for everybody, not just Catholics or Muslims or Protestants, but for everyone. And we have to remember God created us all. And so whatever our differences, our similarities are always greater. Yeah. But let's go, and I wish you could stay, I wish we could do more, but we only have the two hours. But I, I want to give your website is um, outofbodytravel.org. And do you have any events that you want to mention that, that are coming up? Well, I'd like to mention, if, you, if you're just getting started, uh, go ahead and download Come to Wisdom's Door and the Mysteries of the Redemption. And we also have a course of study that's on the site that's totally free that you can take at your own pace that will help you to take a lot of these concepts and expand upon them in a way that will hopefully uh, open your heart and your mind and help you with the spiritual warfare. I also have a book specifically called Spiritual Warfare, Angels and Demons. It's in the Mystic Knowledge series. So if you are experiencing any type of oppression of any sort, you might wanna go directly to that book. And again, they're all downloadable for free. So you can download them on the Out of Body Books page 
at outofbodytravel.org. I highly, highly suggest that you go to the website and look at these books. I can, I don't want to be toot my own horn, but I can usually tell when something is very good and this is very, very good. This is absolutely going to help you. And can people contact you? You do counseling, you do spiritual direction. I do. I, I, uh, uh, my, my email address is right at the top of the website, Marilyn Hughes at outofbodytravel.org. And you can sign up for spiritual counseling at the website as well. And um, yes, feel free to email me with any questions or concerns or even, uh, you know, if you just want to share what's going on with you and we can talk about it and see if we can come up with a plan. So, yeah, feel free to email me at any time. And I like your audio files. They're very, very nice. You have a lot of these audio files here. This is what you're talking. Oh, these are your books. Yeah, these are the books. That's right. And you have all these books that are here. Um, I got to read them all. I'm going to have to read them. <laughs> also, for people who do want audio files, we do have them on Audible as well. So if you prefer hearing books to reading them, you can do that as well. And digital, you know, all of that stuff. It's all available there. So the website is outofbodytravel.org. Marilyn, I can't thank you enough. I hope that you would consider coming on again. I would I, love to. Yeah. Love to. More deeper subjects. My listeners will be very, very blessed from your, your guest and your knowledge. Your guest. Your knowledge. <laughs> and anytime, please. And thank you all for listening. And say a prayer for everyone because this is hard work. And um, take care, everyone. Until next Wednesday, God bless. Thank you.